Hi guys, welcome back to the Liberated Mommy YouTube channel. I'm Alexia, a work at home mom that sells on eBay and Poshmark and does a number of other things to try to work from home. So today I wanted to talk about the new, relatively new feature on Poshmark where you can get your sales report, which is awesome. And I just want to talk about how to what it, like what it shows you overall and then i made some modifications in the spreadsheet i just wanted to share those with everybody um in case you don't know how to use excel or you're just not familiar with that kind of thing um just to make it a little bit easier to get you some more information out of it so let's let me share my screen so i can show that to you and we'll look at the sales report all right guys so here we are in our sales report um, you can get the sales report by going through your seller tools through the Poshmark app. I can't find a way to get it online. Doesn't mean it's not there. I just haven't found it in the few minutes that I looked for it. So once you report, once you request your seller uh, report, your sales report, you can request it based on a month or the whole year. Here's the one I did for all of 2018 so far, and then they will email you a spreadsheet. So you don't need to have Microsoft Excel to do this. Um, you can also open it up in Google. Um, so Google has Google Sheets, so you can use that to open this if you don't have Microsoft uh, Office stuff. So that's okay. But I am going to show you in Excel how to do this, and I will show you a similar way to do this in Google Doc. I mean, um, Google Sheets because it's not always the same. So Google Sheets is just to find it, or maybe it's called Google Pages one of the two, um, that's under your Google Drive and you'll see all the apps. I'll show you that in a second. But basically this first part is just gonna how to use it in Excel. So what I did was I looked at the whole year and this is what they give you. So they have these things labeled um, at the top. I'm pretty sure like if you want to expand a column, like if you can't see all the words, cause I'm pretty sure these come um, hard to see. So if you like, let's say it comes like this, right? or uh, let's see like this cut off right you can't see all of these words so what you can do is right here at the top of the column that it's in if you make sure that the the cursor looks like that like a line with two arrows pointing either way if you double click it it'll auto expand and fit to whatever the words are so I went ahead and did that across the board here that'll also happen if like on here if the numbers get cut off it'll be a bunch of hashtags so again hashtags means there's something there but you just can't see it with the way the cell is each one of these things is called a cell so if you open that you'll be able to see that so anyway this is really cool i'm going to bold this so i can see it all and underline it because that's the way i like it to look um and so basically what i think is awesome about this is they tell me the listing date and the order date which is really cool because it can show you how long something has been on Poshmark. And then it gives you the order ID, the listing title, whatever you called it, the category, subcategory, the brand of the item, the color, the size, was it a bundle or not? Do you take an offer on it or not? What were the what was the price? What was the discount if it went over or something? I don't know why it's saying I don't know what a seller shipping discount is. Um Oh, here we go, net earnings. So you can see, I can't see all that word. The buyer state and the buyer zip code. So the net earnings to me, like the most important categories are gonna be, um, well, there's a lot of important stuff here, but I feel like the order ID not as important. Um, the color maybe could be important. We'll talk about all this in just a second. But what I wanted to show was that, oh, let me say this really quick. At the top here, they talk about some, um, not considerations, but I guess like, uh, what's the word? I'm blanking on the word. Some uh, conditions that you need to know about before you're looking at this. So they're saying that only completed sales where you've actually received your earnings are shown in your sales report. So anything that's pending acceptance and stuff is not going to be shown on there. Any returns probably are not going to be on there. Um, bundles are displayed as itemized listings so I notice in here I have a bundle and it looks like it looks like the bundle items were listed and sold on the same day when they weren't um, it just I don't know why I did that and then order price for a bundle item is the whole listing price minus the bundle discount so it might look like 
the one item sold for that price, but it's not. It's the whole bundle. And then your seller shipping discount for an individual bundle item is in the price, blah, blah, blah. And then your net earnings is the order price minus your shipping discount minus the fees. So that's obvious, right? It's whatever you actually brought home. And then the balance should not be used for accounting purposes. Please refer to your balance, blah, blah. Okay. So with those in mind, one of the things that I wanted to know was on the listing date and the order date, right? So I'm like, oh, that's awesome. I can see how long it's been on Poshmark, but I don't want to add <laughs> or try to count that up. So I'm interested in actual days. I mean, you could say, okay, it was approximately two months. It was approximately whatever. But I'd like to know how many days specifically. So this is the part of the video where I'm going to show you something that's new. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to add a column. So on the C here, we're going to right click and we're going to say insert. And it's going to add a column to the left of that. And this column is going to be called how many days or how... I guess how many days until sold, whatever you want to call it, doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to wrap the text because I, like, I don't want it to be all spread out over here. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a formula to be able to calculate the difference in days. So the way you calculate a formula is you're going to click on the cell, which is this little box. You're going to put the equal sign and then you're going to say this date. So you're going to click that, and it's important not to type in the date. You actually need to click this other cell over here, minus sign, and then the order date cell, okay? Now, it's going to give me something crazy. So what you have to do here to make sure that it doesn't show up as some weird day, which it will, what you want to do is you want to come up here to the middle, top middle, and you want to click the date button and say general, and it will give you a number. So that is showing me that it was on there for 59 days. And so what you can do is actually, instead of typing that in for every single one of them, and the bottom right here, there's this little square, and you can make sure, now make sure, make, okay. So Excel uses all these little cursor changes to do things. So the cursor, it's very important that it doesn't look this. It doesn't look this, but it looks like this. So just a solid um, crosshairs. And so you want to put it on the bottom and that little thing. And then you want to hold your mouse down and drag that all the way to the bottom of your cells. Okay. And what that's going to do is it's going to take that formula and it's going to apply it to everything. So if we click here or like here or whatever, it's going to be doing this for every single one of them. Okay. This one was sat there forever. I have a reason for that. Okay. So now that gives us a lot of good information. So I'm going to highlight that just because that is our new information here. I don't want to be pink. Let's do blue. Okay. So how many days until, until the item sold? So, you know, you can go through here and look at this. Like this is the one I was talking about with the bundle. Like that wasn't on there for like a day. It took a while to sell. So I have to figure that out. But basically you can see all your different items. And so this is really important because as a seller, you can look at your stuff and be like, Oh, that was on there for one day and I remember that that was on there for one day so it was on there for one day and it sold let's see what it sold for fifty dollars not bad right so I might make a mental note that I need to buy that brand of course it's St. John so yeah but it's like or you know three days or maybe you want to ask yourself what can I buy that is going to sell within a week or whatever now obviously this has to do with quality of the item um potentially size so that's where the size factor over here in this other column comes into play maybe it's a certain size of the item that actually matters most and obviously season so just because i sold a sweater in a day in december doesn't mean i'm going to sell that same sweater in june um that fast so all those things to keep in mind so you can kind of go down through here and look at all that so another piece of information you might be interested in knowing is what's the average amount of time for an item to sell and so we're going to create that here. Now for me, my average sell time is going to be really skewed because I have some of these items like this one that was on there for a year. Um, and a lot of them, a couple of these were on there for a long time. And that's because I started Poshmark last June, like 2017. And then I just kind of forgot about Poshmark and then picked it back up again this March. And so those items had not sold, obviously. I hadn't been sharing anything. I hadn't been following anybody. I hadn't been listing anything. So they were just sitting there. So they finally, finally sold. 
So that's going to be skewed a little bit. But nonetheless, we can create this in our thing now. So what we're going to do is we're going to click below this column that we want to edit or want to calculate. And we're going to say, let's label it actually. Go to the one beside of it. And we're going to say the average day, we'll say average days from listed to sold. You can call it whatever you want. Um, that's what makes sense to me. So that's what I'll call it. And then over here in the column beside of that, we'll say equals, and we're going to say average, and open parenthesis. The other option is you can click this where it says average. And then it's not doing it. So we're going to have average open parenthesis. And then we're going to highlight this entire column. Now you can't. You want to click the bottom one and go all the way up to the top of whatever it is you're wanting to calculate. Don't include the words um, and just go with that. Okay, so it's going to say it took me an average of 51 days to be able to sell an item. So in about a month and a half, almost two months from something to sell, which isn't bad. Um, obviously, I like it to be faster. For me personally, if I, so you have two ways to get rid of outlier data like this. Like I have that those couple of items that were kind of skewed. You could go in here. It'll be what I'm going to choose to do is I'm going to just delete the information without saving anything, um, or you can always have the original file from Poshmark. But if I delete these really long days, uh, that one actually we'll do 200 and up because all of that stuff was listed a long time ago. So if we delete those items, yeah, then you see it's actually a month. So it took quite a bit of time off. So I have about a month turnaround on Poshmark, which is a great thing for me to see. And I feel like what's interesting is that selling on eBay, it's hard to get this information because the really cool thing about Poshmark is that you can take an item and you put it on there and it I mean, doesn't go away. I hope, I hope, I hope they don't change that. I'm sure as a platform gets larger, they're going to have a harder time keeping the items because they have to keep this in their server base, right? And so at some point, they're going to run out of space. Um, I hope I'm not, I'm knock on wood. I hope that doesn't happen. Uh, but for right now, it works out really well because on eBay, you have to keep relisting the item. And every time you relist, because you don't actually hit relist, it's not, I hit sell similar. And so therefore, it's not keeping track of it. So I, as the seller, have to keep track of it. That's what I love about this Poshmark one is that it tells me you listed it in June, it sold in April, in April. Well, yeah, okay, April of the next year. This is how long it took. All right. So getting your average sales day is important information. I'm just going to leave that. All right. So the other thing that I think is really important is your price. Okay. So, um, I don't know why that one focus. So you can look at your average order price. But what I personally am going to care about the most are my net earnings. So for this one, we want to do very something very similar to what we just did with the average days of how long it took to sell. And we're going to do the average um, earnings. So here they have totals. So I'm going to type this in here just so we can see it. These are your totals. So this is like the total amount that I sold on Poshmark and the total amount that I got in net earnings. That seems, that seems low, not low, but like, I mean, cause I've, I've been doing Poshmark actively since I think it was like mid March. You can kind of see when I picked stuff up and started listing a lot more. Yeah, like mid March. So, um, I feel like the order price means like what they paid for it, and the earnings is what I got for it, minus all the stuff. But it just seems odd to go from nine hundred to seven hundred. I guess two hundred. Um, I can't do math right now. Yeah, I guess that's right. About twenty percent. Okay. Um. Oh, duh. Twenty. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Okay, so that's right. Sorry. Okay, so what we have here are the net earnings. I'm going to see if I can freeze this. Freeze. Ugh. It won't let me. Okay, so the O column. Okay, net earnings. So you can go down through there and you can add it all up. Or 
you can, we want to do an average, right? So I want to see how, basically my average sale price. So again, doing equals, average, and then highlighting all of the cells that you want to involve in this information. So that tells me that I have an average sell or average earnings of $15.91 per item, which, you know, that's up, totally up to you. Like whatever your business model is, whatever works for you, that works for me. Um, I would like to get at least $10 an item. Well, a minimum, like ideally I'd like to get $20 an item because for me, I'm able to find a lot of items really cheap, like a dollar or less. A lot, my average sell uh, cost of goods is two dollars and fifty cents. But a lot of times I can get stuff for really, really cheap because I find them in bulk, or we have a ninety-nine cent outlet here and a lot of ninety-nine cent deals, so I can use those. So again, this average earnings, those two really big pieces of information that are really, really helpful. Um, I don't think the buyer or zip code and state has any. I don't think that's helpful. It might be, I guess, so that you can see uh, for tax purposes all of the, um, like I have one that I want to have to pay sales tax on. But everything else, like, doesn't, it's not in state. So at least that's the current, the current rule. All right, so let's look at, I think the other pieces of information that are really, really important would be or that could be important to you would be these these three categories here so um looking at your item seeing that you sold a pair of boots for uh that were size 12 but you had another pair listed that are size 8 and they're just not selling right or the size that was a large sold a lot faster than the size that was extra small that'll kind of give you an idea of certain brands colors sizes if any of that matters um, I feel like as a seller, you probably have a handle on that, but it could be really valuable for you to research this. Maybe you, if you had to sell a ton, then that would be helpful. Um, this, I don't have a lot of cells on here. I have what, 50 something, um, cause it starts on, so I have 40 something. So 40 something cells, uh, this year with most of them being, I had one, two, three, four, five. So I had most, like most of them are for March on. So I'm working on Poshmark and building it up, but I just wanted to teach you guys that in Excel. I'm going to add a second part to this. It's going to be on Google, um, in Google Drive, so I can show you guys that. But this is really how you do it. I hope that you guys are using this sales feature. I just wanted to show that tip because for me, that would have been a great column to add and then figuring out your average sell price. So I hope that's helpful, guys. Thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button if you want more content like this. If you like this, if you want somebody else to see it, share it with them and um, hit that little bell notification to get uh, notified when I post a video. Thank you. All right, so to do it on Google Docs, which is free, I mean, not Google Docs, it's Google Sheets. Um, basically, you're gonna go into your Google Drive and then you're gonna, you can click pl the plus sign. Um, I can't show you because I'll show you all my stuff in my Google Drive, but you're gonna click the upper left you're going to say new and then plus sign and then click sheets and then or you can just open um put this file that you have downloaded from poshmark put it into your google drive and then just click open it if you don't have it there already i had to i had downloaded it to my computer and then i had to go into google drive click the plus sign new and then select to open this anyway here we are so it's going to look very much the same um the only difference is that in google drive I mean, yeah, in Google Drive and Google Sheets, everything is not always the exact same because it's free. So some of this stuff is limited and it's just a different platform altogether. Let me move my face out of the way. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to do the same thing. So remember, we want to click the C, insert. We're going to say column to the left. Gives you an option here. Um, this is how many days. Whoa. How? Any days until sold and then we are going to do the same formula thing which is the exact same thing um, oh not average sorry <sighs> I said it myself so we're gonna click this one then this one and it's gonna give us something oh so it's easier on Google Google Sheets actually because it doesn't make me have to figure that out 
um, to change it back and forth from a date to that. So it automatically does it. So again, you can drag it down, same thing, and we'll add that on there. And then everything else is the same. You should be able to add your average here and then click the whole sheet um, or click the whole column that you want to include. Now, if you want to also pick and choose, you can actually um, type in average parentheses and then holding the control button, select the ones you want. So for instance, let's say I wanted to average this one, this one, and that one, but that one, and then that one, you're just doing commas in between them. And so you can do it that way too. Okay. So I think that should be, that's fine. Everything else should be the exact same and then you'll be able to look at it. So I hope that helps. Oh, I didn't even get into graphing. If anybody's interested in graphs, I can show you how to do that because you can actually graph your stuff over time and look and see what that looks like. So let's see. I'm going to do it anyway, just because I'm curious. So I'll do a different video about how to do that because that can get kind of complicated. But you can basically graph and show over time where your cells peaks are. Um, what kind of items, all sorts of fun stuff with data. I'll spare you guys. So I hope that helps. So Google, Google Drive and then Google Sheets, open it up. You should be able to do it for free. And that way you can look at your cells, get some knowledge about what your cells are doing, what items you should be focusing on, et cetera. Anything that will help you improve your business. That's what I like to share. Hope this was helpful guys. And thank you for watching and have a great day.